So we've been looking at vectors and what a vector is. So a vector has direction. So I'm going to use my pen, has direction. And it has either a length, it could be speed, it could be force. Um, so when we're looking at this, there are different tools to help us with our trigonometry and with other applications. So doing research on this, um, vectors, I saw that there's a lot of different fields that use vectors like um, computer animation, engineering, um, physics, mathematics. So um, it's a very useful subject. But anyway, so in front of us, we're going to, so we're going to continue on vectors. So in front of us is what is called the dot product. And the dot product is going to help us with um, some application. And so what the dot product says is that we have a vector. One vector is V equals A sub one plus the vector I plus B sub one times the vector J. And so remember when we, we could write vectors in different forms. And in this form, this I was the um, unit vector that was the horizontal component and B sub J or J was the the vertical component unit vector. Okay, so we have this vector V and we have this vector W, which is equal to A sub two I plus B sub J, B sub two J. Um, so if we have these two vectors and we wanna look at the dot product, the dot product is V dot W is defined as the following. So basically all you're doing is you're multiplying your horizontal, components together and your vertical components together of that vector, and then you're adding them. So we talked about there's a difference between a vector because that has direction and it has magnitude and a number. A number is just like a scalar. And so the dot product just gives us back some number. So let's look at an example. So let's say that we have V, this is equal to the vector 2i minus 3j. And W, let's say, is the vector 3i plus 5j. So if we were looking at the dot product of V and W, Again, all we're doing is we're multiplying our horizontal components together. So two times three plus, and we're multiplying our vertical components together. So negative three all times five. So this is equal to six, two times three is six, and negative three times five is minus 15. So six minus 15 is negative nine. So you can see that commutative, it has a commutative property. If I switch those around and I did W times or dot V, that I would have the same horizontal components and I'd have the same vertical components. And so I would get back the same result. So looking at V dot V, vector V times uh, dot vector V, we would have looking at the same components. So it would be two times two plus, and then in this case, we have negative three times negative three. So this is equal to four, negative three times negative three is plus nine, which is 13. Okay, so recall we could find the magnitude and how we found the magnitude was, and we denoted it with these two vertical lines, the vector V with the arrow above it. This was equal to the square, the square root of the square of the first component in this case is two. So two squared plus the vertical component squared, negative three squared. So we get two squared is four, 
negative three squared is nine. So this is giving us the square root of four plus nine, which is 13. So we'll see in a formula that we're gonna be using soon. Notice that if I looked at V dot V, and I look at this, um, the magnitude of V. Well, this is the square root of 13 and this is 13. So if we were going to square the magnitude, that's gonna give us back, oops, square root of 13 squared is 13. So I could say that here, that the dot product of V with itself, so V dot V is equal to the same thing as if I have the magnitude quantity squared. Okay, so it's not bad to be able to take the dot product of two vectors. We did the magnitude before. So like I had mentioned, that dot product was commutative. It didn't matter which direction we multiplied vector u first or vector v first. u dot v is the same as v dot u. It also has the distributive property like it does with real numbers or scalars. And so if we look at u dot v plus w, we could, if we wanted to, combine the two vectors v and w add them together and then take the dot product of that sum with u. Or we can use that distributive property where we're distributing that vector u to each term inside the parentheses or each vector and then taking the dot product and summing the dot product of that distribution. So what I had just showed is right here. If I look at the vector v dot vector v, this is equal to the magnitude quantity squared. We talked about the zero vector. The zero vector doesn't have any direction. It doesn't have any magnitude. If I look at that zero vector and I multiply it by any vector, I get back a scalar zero. Okay. So it says if a vector v let me fix this. So when I typed this, the vector part didn't come out and then that's not bold face. So let me fix it really quickly. Okay, so what I have in here is just exactly what I had stated. If you have a vector V, A sub, um, with the vector A, I plus B vector J. They should have arrows on them. Um, the dot product of v dot v is equal to the magnitude squared of so this formula right here, which we showed in that last example that we got the same thing. And we can show it if we wanted to for any case we had showed with a specific example before. Um, let's just do it really quickly. So v dot v, this is equal to a times a plus b times b. And this is equal to a squared plus b squared, where if we looked at the magnitude of v quantity squared, this is equal to the square root of the horizontal component squared plus the vertical component squared, that quantity squared. So squaring a square root, that get rid of the radical, and we're left with a squared plus b squared, which we got with a dot product. So we've been dealing with just the horizontal and the vertical components of the vector. Um, so kind of on a flat surface. If we have three dimensional, we can have a third component. And so this vector V here is equal to A sub one times the vector I plus B sub one times the vector J plus C sub one times the vector K. 
where our vector w is equal to a sub 2 vector i plus b sub 2 vector j plus c sub 2 vector k. So k is like the, the axis z on um, if we're looking at x, y axis, and then k would be the z axis. So um, if you have two vectors and you're looking at it and with those three components of the vector, the dot product of v dot w is defined where we're just going to, again, we're going to multiply our horizontal components, our vertical components together, and our components of z, or in this k, k, k and then sum them together. So we're going to come up with a formula. And with that formula, we are using the law of cosines. So recall, looking at the law of cosines, if we had a triangle and we had sides of a triangle, so A, B, and C, and we had this angle theta in here, and we knew we used the law of, of cosines when we knew the two sides and the angle in between those two sides. If we knew the angle on the side across, we ended up using the law of sines. So the law of cosines, recall, we could take some side, so let's say C, C squared is equal to the side A squared plus B squared minus two times the side A times the side B cosine of the angle in between them theta. So we're gonna use that with this vector. So recall with vector addition, or subtraction. Subtraction was just changing the direction of the vector. Um, what we did was we looked at the, the tail of one vector, v. Actually, they sandwiched this one together. And this is u, and this would be u minus v. So let me just kind of uh, show this a little bit differently because we can move vectors around as long as we keep the shape or not the shape, the direction and the length or the speed or whatever it is, it's the same exact vector, it's equivalent. And so looking at this, recall when we were adding vectors, so if I wanted to add vector u plus v, I could start, there was two different ways to do this. I could look at my vector u. So same direction, same length in here. So this is my vector u, and if I wanted to add v, I went to the terminal point of my vector u, and I started the initial point of my vector v. So that's going in this direction. Doesn't look like the same to me. <laughs> um, and then, well, this was u plus v. This would give me this point in here. So I start at the end point of the vector v and go to the terminal or the initial point of u, so u plus v. OK, um, so u minus v. Differently. So you minus that's going in the opposite direction. I was doing the the difference right there. So minus V right here, I'm going in the opposite direction. I am not doing good with, with the same direction. Let me grab this. Okay, so looking at this, I'm looking at my vector V. And I'm gonna just grab it really quickly and move it over. So grabbing this vector V right here and moving it over going in the opposite direction. So it's going in this direction. 
There we go. So this is the, and so here is our vector u minus v. which is the exact same thing that we have above. Um, it's just that it's um, the orientation, let's see. I'm getting caught up on this, which I don't really wanna get caught up on this, but I should have the same picture as I have above. There was one other way to add vectors and so the other way to add vectors, recall we could make a parallelogram. And so if I have this vector u, and um, I have this vector v, and they're sandwiched together like they are, and then if I could add it, I would make a parallelogram. and the vector that joined the initial point where they started, this would be the sum. Okay, so let's just go back and just showing what I, what I wanted to show. Um, so looking at this and using the law of cosines with this image that we have, we're looking at the magnitude of u minus v, quantity squared. And so magnitude here, u minus v, quantity squared. We're looking at here the magnitude of u squared plus the magnitude of v squared minus two magnitude of u times magnitude of v cosine of the angle, which is in between them. So let's look at this formula and let's um, and let's just um, do some operations and manipulate it to the formula you want. So I'm going to erase this to give me some room. So magnitude of u and v, so I'm looking at the square root of, okay, so we have here the magnitude of u minus v quantity squared. So we have the square root of the vector u plus the vector v, u squared plus v squared, all times. Okay. Okay, so actually, well, let's go back. I think that what we're gonna do instead, we had, and I had kind of emphasized it before, that if we had the magnitude quantity squared, that's the same thing as taking the dot product. So this is the same thing as the vector u minus the vector v dot the vector u minus the vector v is equal to the magnitude of u quantity squared. We show that that was the same thing as the vector u dot vector v, plus the magnitude of v quantity squared is v dot v minus two. Well, if we look at the square root times the square root, which we would have with these radicals, that would get rid of the radical no, that would not get rid of the radical. Let's just keep it as the uh, magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. That was not right. It would not get rid of the radical. Cosine of theta. So we can use the distributive property we saw with vectors. And so let's use the um, distributive property here. So we're looking at u dot u minus v. 
is equal to, or not equal to, because that's just the first term in the first parentheses, minus v dot the vector u minus v. This is equal to, so u dot u. We just have the same thing as we have above, v dot v minus 2 magnitude of vector u times magnitude of vector v all times cosine of theta. So doing our distributive property, we have u dot u minus u dot v. And then distributing the negative v dot u. So negative v dot u has a commutative property, so we can rewrite it as u dot v minus the vector v times the vector v, so v dot v. So vector u dot v again plus v dot v minus 2 magnitude of u times the magnitude of v cosine of theta. So let's start moving things around in here. And so if we subtract, notice u dot u. And let's get cosine theta by itself. Our u dot u's cancel out with each other. Same thing. And this should have been a plus here because negative times negative is plus. So same thing as when I subtract this v dot v to get it to the other side they cancel out. So what we're left with is negative two, because we have two of these terms that are like, so negative two u dot v is equal to this negative two magnitude of u as magnitude of v cosine of theta. So getting cosine of theta by itself we can divide both sides by this negative 2 vector u vector v. Think in the magnitude of those. So divided by negative 2 magnitude of u and magnitude of v. So this is a formula that we could use and no, oops, and our negative twos cancel. This is a formula we can use if we needed to find the angle between two vectors. We could just take the cosine inverse of both sides. We can use that form, or you notice that sometimes we manipulate our equations. And if we, um, we could use the form that we had before. So if we wanted to look at what is another way to take the dot product of u and v, this is the same thing as the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v cosine of theta. Okay, so we just showed with the law of cosines that the angle between two vectors, u and v, are two non-zero vectors. It ends up that our angle in between has to be between and including zero and pi. Um, and the formula, we just derived it, is cosine of theta is equal to u dot v all over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of V. Okay, so what does it mean to be orthogonal? Well, we've been working with right degree, um, right angle <laughs> triangles. And so it's orthogonal when we are looking at it coming in at a perpendicular angle. Um, it's perpendicular is another way to say it. orthogonal. Orthogonal is just dealing with the vectors. 
And so if two vectors, if we take the dot product and we get back zero, this tells me that the two vectors are orthogonal. Or another way to say that is the angle theta is equal to 90 degrees, or it's equal to, if we're thinking about radians, pi halves. Okay, so let's actually show this, that if we multiply two vectors together and we get back the zero vector, that it's orthogonal. And so recall that v dot v or v dot w is equal to cosine of theta all over the magnitude of v times the magnitude of w. And our angles, it said it's orthogonal if um, we get back zero. And orthogonal meant that it was perpendicular. And our angle when it's perpendicular or orthogonal is 90 degrees or pi halves. If we plug that into our formula here for theta, recall that when we get cosine of theta, which is pi halves or 90 degrees, all over vector v times vector w, the magnitude of those, cosine of pi halves gives us back zero. So zero over magnitude of v times the magnitude of w is equal to zero. So we can test to see if two vectors are orthogonal by taking, taking the dot product of the two vectors. If we get back zero, we know the angle between those two vectors and the vectors might not be in the same spot, but if we move them together, same angle, same direction, um, same magnitude as the other vector, they're the same. And so that angle where they would join when we're putting the initial points together, they're orthogonal. If we get back zero, taking the dot product. The other thing that we're gonna be looking at is when it's either zero or pi. So if I have a vector and the vector is laying on top of it, or it's the same vector or same way here, maybe not the same vector, it could be longer or shorter, um, the magnitude is different, but the same direction, that is, there's no angle in between those two. And so the angle is zero. And um, so if the angle is zero, cosine of zero, recall is equal to one. Um, if we are looking at it and they're going in opposite direction, so we have some vector here and it's going in one direction, opposite is the other. So this would give us an angle there of, pi halves. And so recall cosine of pi halves was negative one. So let's look at some examples. We're given two vectors. And in here we're given that our vector v is equal to vector i plus vector j. And our vector w this is equal to our vector negative i plus j. So looking at this, I want us to find the dot product of v and w. Let's write it. So all we're doing again is we're multiplying our horizontal components together. So one times negative one plus multiplying the vertical components together. So one times one. So this here is giving us one times negative one is negative one plus one times one, which is one. This is equal to zero. So it wanted us to find the dot product. It wanted us to find the angle between the two. We said that if we got back zero it was orthogonal. And so we know that the angle in between then is zero. 
are not zero. We know the angle in between is pi halves, or if we're talking about degrees, 90 degrees. And then part C wanted us to state is this vector parallel or orthogonal. And I might wanna show what I had had here. So let's go back and plug it into the formula. So recall cosine of theta is equal to the dot product of V dot W all over the magnitude of V times the magnitude of W. So I want you to show your work on things. And so here we saw that the dot product, right, was zero all over magnitude of V times the magnitude of W. And this is cosine theta. So looking at the inverse of both sides, we get theta is equal to cosine inverse of zero over anything other than zero. So we have cosine is zero. So we have cosine inverse of zero. So what gives us back zero, we just talked about it was pi halves or 90 degrees. And question C ask, is this vector parallel or orthogonal? We've just been talking about that or neither, because it could be neither. It's orthogonal. So let's look at a couple more of those or another one of those, and then we can move on. So if we have vector V, and this is equal to the vector I plus root three vector J. And let's say vector W is equal to I minus vector J. Before we do that, I'm sorry, let's go back to that other example. And I want us to look at, just to get um, a review, let's look at graphing these vectors. So we could graph these vectors. We know the horizontal and the vertical component. And so our vector V, our horizontal component was one, and our vertical component was also one. So if we plotted that, that's our terminal point of our vector, and putting it in initial position, this is our vector V here. Let's now plot vector W. Vector W is negative one. We're going over negative one. And then our, our vertical component is one. And so we have this vector V here, not V, this is W. And so now we have this angle in here, theta. which we just showed that that angle in between was 90 degrees. We could, if we technically wanted to, we could have used a different way to define that. We could have found what the distance is here. If we know that distance, we could figure out what um, length, we could figure out what the magnitude of W is, the magnitude of V, and we know two sides, and we want to know the angle in between, we could find that, that distance or that magnitude. And that magnitude and use the log cosines. Other way we could have done it is we could figure out what the angle is in here. So let's say that was alpha. And the angle that is in here, that's beta. We could look at taking 180 degrees minus our alpha and our beta angles. And that would give us angle theta. 
So in this case, there's multiple ways that we could approach that using trigonometry. Okay, so now let's go back to the, the next example I was bringing up. We have new vectors V and W. V is equal to vector I plus root three times vector J. W is equal to vector I minus vector J. So again, let's first graph the vectors. So I'm going to put them in this position. So it's one root three. So going over one and up root three. We have our vector V. And then W, we're going to go over one and down one. And this is our vector W. So part B, let's look at the dot product of V dot W. So this is equal to one times the horizontal component of the other vector, one, plus the vertical components multiplied together, so root three, all times negative one. So this equals one minus root three. Okay, so notice that we didn't get to zero there. So it's not telling, it's not orthogonal. Part C wants us to find the angle in between. So we can use our formula that we know that cosine theta is equal to the dot product of the two vectors, so V and W, all over the magnitude of V times the magnitude of W. So we need to figure out what the magnitude of V is. Let's do the work up here. So magnitude of V, this is equal to the square root of the vertical and horizontal component square and summing that. So horizontal component is one, one squared plus the vertical component root three squared. So this is equal to the square root of one plus three equals the square root of four, which is equal to two. The magnitude of W, this is equal to the square root of our horizontal component squared, so one squared plus the vertical component, which is negative one squared. So this gives me the square root of one plus one, which is equal to two, root two. So plugging that information back in, I get cosine theta is equal to the dot product of V and W, which we found to be one minus root three, all over the magnitude of V, which we found to be two, all times the magnitude of W, which we found to be root two. So we have cosine of theta is equal to one minus root three, all over two, root two. Looking at cosine inverse of both sides, we get theta is equal to the cosine inverse of this, one minus root three, all over two, root two. So this is not one that we know. And so let's plug that into the calculator. And so just make sure to see if they want it in degrees or radians or give both. So plugging in the calculator, we get theta is equal to cosine inverse. Plugging in parentheses one minus root three into parentheses divided by parentheses two times root square root of two in parentheses 
we get cosine inverse of negative 0 0.146 approximately. And so looking at this and taking the cosine inverse using degrees, we get back approximately 98.4 degrees. Plugging that in radians, and getting radians. Sorry. And I messed everything up when I plugged in radians into my calculator. Okay, so cosine inverse of parentheses one minus root three and my parentheses for the numerator divided by my denominator two root two and that I'm taking the cosine inverse of that in radians and I get that in radians. It's approximately 1.17. So we found the angle in between, and it wanted us to know, is this parallel, orthogonal, or neither? Well, we didn't get our angle to be um, zero, and we didn't get it to be one or negative one, or we didn't get it to be um, angle to be zero or pi. And we didn't get the dot product I meant to say is we didn't get the dot product to equal zero. So we know it's not a 90 degree angle. Or it would have fallen out here too when we solved it. So in our next example, we want to find the vectors so that these two vectors v and w are orthogonal. So we're given that vector v is vector i minus a vector j. And we have the vector w, which is equal to two vector i plus vector plus three vector j. And so looking at this, we need to figure out what a is in order to make this vector orthogonal. So if they're orthogonal, we know that when we take the dot product of the two, we're going to get back zero. And so let's look at the dot product of the two. So I'm looking at the horizontal component of vector v, which is one, times the horizontal component of vector w, which is two, plus a all times three. This is supposed to equal zero. So it's just a linear equation that we need to solve. So we have one times two is two, plus three times a equals zero. We need to subtract two on both sides. We get three a equals negative two. And then divide both sides by three. We get a is negative two thirds. Right. So we figured out what our vector v needs to be. It's one minus a negative, so one plus two thirds j to be orthogonal to w. So now we're going to look at ways that we can decompose some vector v into two vectors v sub one and v sub two, where v sub one is parallel to our vector w and v sub two is orthogonal to our vector w. So this is called decomposing vector onto another vector. So let me go through that before we look at an example. So let's say we want to take vector v and we want to project it on vector w. So for instance, let's say that we have some vector v here. We have some vector W here. 
we can take this vector w, right? And we can move it as long as we keep the same direction and shape. And let's move it so that this tail or the initial point of the vector, they line up with one another. So that is our vector w there. And we want to project vector v onto w. So kind of think of this as maybe we have out here this sun. How many yellow? Suns have to be yellow. And it's casting a shadow where maybe this is the ground. So vector W is laying on this ground. And this sun here is projecting onto V as a shadow onto W. So what would happen is this V, right, could be longer or shorter, depending on where the sun is, projects onto W. And so if V is projecting onto W, notice though those vectors are going to be parallel. So if we project V onto W, we have the following formula. So the formula, we're gonna write it out. We have, and notation-wise, to say that we're projecting V onto W, we have the following. Projecting V onto W, this is equal to the dot product of V, and W all over the magnitude of W times the magnitude of W. So this is going to give us some scalar. So this is going to make our, and then we're going to multiply it to our vector W. So recall, we can rewrite this a little bit. We saw that if we had the magnitude of W times the magnitude of W, that was the same thing as W dot W. So we could rewrite this as V dot W is equal to W dot W all times vector V. So let's look at an example here. Let's say that we were given that the vector V is equal to the following. Vector V is equal to two vector I plus four vector J and W is equal to negative two vector I plus six times vector J. And we wanna determine the projection of V onto W. So let's just break this down. Let's first look at, we have the formula in front of us, V not W. So looking at the dot product of those again, we're looking at the horizontal components multiplied together. So two times negative two, summing it with the multiple of the vertical components multiplied together, so four times six. So two times negative two is negative four, plus four times six, this gives us 24. And we have negative four plus 24 gives us 20. So that gives us here the V dot W. Now let's look at W dot W. So if I look at W dot W, This is equal to multiplying our horizontal components together. So negative two times negative two plus multiplying our vertical components together. So six times six. So this is equal to four plus 36, which is equal to 40. So 
So our scalar that we get back when we're multiplying V dot W all over W dot W is 20 over 40, which is gonna reduce down all times our vector V. So 20 over 40 is one half, all times our vector V, excuse me, um, which is negative two times vector I plus six times vector J. <clears throat> Distributive property, we have one half times negative two vector I, that gives me negative one vector I. One half times six, that gives me three vector J. So the projection of V onto W would give us this vector, let's call it V sub one. So in this vector here, V sub one is parallel to our vector W right here. So let's look at that graphically. So let's look at our vector V. So V was horizontal was two, vertical was four. So graphing that, we have this is vector V. Vector W, this was negative two, six. To the left two, up six. And we found that our vector V sub one, which was parallel is negative one, three. Notice that it's lying on top of our vector W and it's parallel to it. So that was V projected on W, which was V sub one. Now um, we want to make an orthogonal vector that um, is orthogonal to W. So if we wanted to compose vector V into two vectors, the one that we just got V sub one and some other vector V sub two, where V sub one is parallel to W, which we just found, and V sub two is orthogonal to W. And so we wanna find some vector in here, which is orthogonal. To W. And we're gonna call that V sub two. So notice this is just vector addition here. If I look at my vector V sub one plus my vector V sub two, I wanna get back my vector here that I started with V. And so I can solve for V sub two, which is the vector I'm trying to solve for, to make it orthogonal by subtracting the vector V sub one on both sides. So my vector V sub two, which I'm trying to find is equal to my vector V minus my vector V sub one. So if I'm now looking for that vector, well, we already found V sub one, we know what V is. So here's our V. So looking at this, I know V sub two is equal to my vector V, which is two vector I plus four vector J minus my vector V sub one. And my vector V sub one, we found to be, let's put parentheses, negative one vector I plus three vector J. So let's distribute that negative in here. And so I get my vector V sub two is equal to, let's 
do that this color. It's equal to two sub i. This is negative is going to distribute, so that's positive one. So two times one. I'm adding them, sorry. Two plus one. I'm not doing the bottom, stop hurting. Two plus one, which is three, vector i. Adding our vertical components together, I have four plus vector um, 4j plus um, minus 3j. So 4 minus 3, that gives me plus vector j. So this is my vector v sub 2. So notice if I graph this, I would go over 3 in the horizontal, and I would go up 1. So that gives me this vector right in here. So notice that's the same vector as a vector up in here. It's just moved down so that the um, initial point of my vector is down here at the origin, and we can do that. So we found the vector v sub 2, which is orthogonal to v sub 1. So here's um, the formulas that we just talked about. If we want two vectors, v and w, that are not um, non-zero, they're non-zero vectors, so they're not a zero vector, and they're non-orthogonal vectors. The vector projected, projection of V onto W, this gives us V sub 1, the one that's parallel, is the dot product of V and W all over the magnitude of W squared times W, which we also said was the same thing as the dot product of V dot product of W all over the dot product magnitude of W squared is the same thing as the dot product of W times um, W all times our vector W. And we talked about to get that second vector, which is orthogonal to W, we're looking at our vector V sub two is equal to the vector V minus our vector v sub one. So let's look at one more example. So let's say our vector v, this is equal to negative three vector i plus two vector j, and vector w is equal to two times vector i plus vector j. And we want to decompose v into two vectors, v sub 1 and v sub 2, where v sub 1 is parallel to v sub 2. And um, I'm sorry, where it's parallel to w and v sub 2 is orthogonal to w. So again, let's plot these just so we can see it visually also. So making our vectors, we have negative 3, 2. This is our vector v. And our vector w, we have 2, 1. So to look at the projection of v onto w, this is equal to the dot product of v dot w all over the magnitude of w times the magnitude of w, which is w dot w cosine of theta. So v dot w looking at this is negative 3 times 2 plus 2 times 1 all over the dot product of w and w. So this is 2 times 2 plus one times one, and I don't know why I put cosine of theta. Well, that's because of our other formula, all times w. Vector w is 2i plus j. So this gives me 3 times 2 is 6, 6 plus 2 is 8, so 8 in the numerator all over 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 times 1 is 1, so 4 plus 1 is 5, so I have 8 fifths all times the vector 2i plus j. 
So that scalar molar multiplication, so just distribute and we get eight fifths times two. And so that is 16 fifths I plus eight fifths J. So this is our V sub one. This is our vector that should be parallel to our vector W. And now let's find the vector which is perpendicular. And we said that we can find that vector perpendicular to our vector W by looking at the difference. So V sub two is equal to the vector V minus the vector V sub one. So taking our vector V negative three and subtracting off our vector V sub one, so minus 16 fifths, this is our I component, plus, and now looking at our horizontal component, so V, which is two, minus a uh, vertical component, minus eighth over five J. So really quickly, let's get a common denominator. So this is negative 15 fifths minus 16 fifths for our horizontal component. And we have 10 plus 10 fifths minus eight fifths for our vertical component times J. So this gives me negative 31 fifths I and plus two fifths J. So this vector here is our vector that is orthogonal to our vector W. I am out of time and I know I have students waiting for me for student hours. So I am going to stop there. This is the last bit of information that we're going through in this course. And we will review for your next exam at the next class period.